Hello there. Well, there you have it. The Tory party has united behind Rishi Schwab. I mean, Rishi Sunak. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe and then like and comment below. So as of tomorrow, we will now have an out-of-touch globalist Prime Minister in the form of Rishi Sunak, probably backed up by the Remainer globalist Chancellor Jeremy Hunt. All engineered by Tory MPs in the House of Commons and no Tory membership vote. Some might think it's a bit of a stitch-up. Those Tory MPs got their way in the end, even if it did mean causing a bit of instability in the process. Klaus Schwab will be purring. But at least the big money men in the financial markets approve. The pound rose against both the US dollar and the euro and 10-year gilt yields came down, which means government borrowing and mortgages should get a bit cheaper. And everyone's talking about stability and unity. But soon the realisation will dawn on people that this means austerity going forwards. Taxes are bound to rise and small businesses will really come under the cosh. And with the Tory continued disinterest in dealing with net inward migration, we will be stuck with low wages and low productivity. And if you think that plush red carpet across the English Channel will be rolled up, no, it will get worse. And the Tory MPs from all sides of the party are making great efforts today to ensure that you know that they are fully behind their new leader. On the veneer-thin surface, that is. Liz Truss has congratulated him and said she will support him. And ardent backers of Boris, like Jacob Rees-Mogg, have said they will back Sunak. They are out to save their party. But can they succeed? And I wonder how the grassroots Boris backers feel. After their champion threw in the towel last night, and despite the talk, it has been confirmed by the 1922 Committee Joint Secretary Bob Blackman that Boris Johnson really did have 102 properly authenticated nominations behind him prior to calling it a day. If he had continued, he might well have emerged as victorious on Friday. But as his statement shows, Boris was probably aware that he would have been unable to unite the parliamentary party, the MPs, behind him. Unless they had knives in their hands, of course. Whatever the membership wanted wouldn't have counted. And there is also the matter of the dark cloud of the Privileges Partygate investigation that seems intent on getting Boris ejected from the Commons. Although there is some scuttlebutt about him possibly being offered a big international job, like maybe the post of NATO Secretary General, an appointment currently held by the former PM of Norway, Jen Stoltenberg, until September next year. But that would take a lot of international consensus to get him there. And this morning, the only other candidate, Penny Mordaunt, failed to get the 100 backers she needed. So it was all over by 2.15. Now, the Tory party Eurosceptic group, the European Research Group, or ERG, put out a statement that they'd met with Rishi Sunak and he assured them that he would be pushing forward with the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill, even to the point of using the Parliament Act if necessary, to bypass the House of Lords, if they played silly beggars with it, as they have stated they will do. Now, I take this statement by the ERG as a statement of intent to hold Rishi's feet to the fire on the protocol. And the Northern Ireland Protocol must be high on the agenda, because it looks like we'll be seeing another set of Stormont elections, due to the DUP refusing to engage with a power-sharing arrangement with Sinn Féin, unless the protocol is dealt with properly. 
and a decision on holding those elections is due this Friday. But they also asked Sunak about defence spending, and it seems that sticking to the previous uplift from 2% of GDP to 3% was not a definite yes. And that could put him on collision course with the Defence Secretary Ben Wallace. We also need to see if the financial statement due to be given by the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, goes ahead next Monday, the 31st of October, the so-called Halloween budget. Now, there has been talk that with the calming of the markets after steady Eddie Rishi became the lone PM candidate, that this statement could be delayed. But we are also due to have the Bank of England interest rate decision a few days later on Thursday of next week. And one assumes it would be good to get that statement out and see the market reaction before the Bank of England makes its decision. And all of this has the left in the form of Labour and the Lib Dems scuttling around demanding a general election. Well, that's not going to happen right now. But it does all depend on how long those Tory MPs can stay knitted together. Discord amongst them is rife. If that starts unravelling, it will split very quickly. And some Boris Johnson backers have already said that a general election is the only way forward. Although many people in the country might well be thinking Sunak needs to be given a chance. But things didn't bode well when giving his first statement as party leader, the video and sound let Sunak down, shades of Theresa May's collapsing backdrop. But the biggest test for Sunak will be facing the unions this winter. And they will definitely not be united behind the new Tory Prime Minister. No, those Labour Party weapons of economic destruction will be doing all they can to oust the Tories. Now, as I said yesterday, the rejoin the EU rabble are all over social media trying to use the current Tory disarray to push people into backing their ridiculous proposals. But the one question they always duck is that of the requirement for all new entrants into the EU having to take on the euro. So I've left a link in the descriptions box below to the EU website page that says any country that satisfies the conditions for membership can apply. These conditions are known as the Copenhagen criteria and include a stable democracy and the rule of law, a functioning market economy and the acceptance of all EU legislation, including of the euro. But the Ramonas never talk about this, so push it back at them every time you see them spouting their nonsense on Facebook and Twitter. Because it would make their job terminally hard if they have to try and justify ditching the pound and joining the euro as a condition for EU entry. Now, it seems that a group of misery guts in the guise of being health campaigners is determined to remove some of the joy of Christmas as they seek to block displays of alcohol in prominent areas in supermarkets. The Alcohol Health Alliance wants the booze put in the same category as snack foods, biscuits and chocolate to be hidden away at the back. But I will point out there's already an age ban on purchasing alcohol, but not on buying chocolate and crisps. Surely an age ban suffices, unless they want to treat us all like little kids in future. The pressure coming to bear on us to morph into human machines is becoming intolerable. Do as you're told. Eat what you're told. Drink what you're told. Take the medicines you're told to take and think what you're told to think. And don't you dare voice any other opinion, let alone argue, or the thought police will be round to check your thinking and reduce your social credit score. Or even quarantine you away. Won't be long before we have health activists supergluing themselves in the aisles to prevent people getting their Christmas cheer. And that wouldn't end well for them.